Hey guys, Jeb Brooks, greenergrass.com. Today I am in London. I'm on my way to Copenhagen in order to get back to Washington, D.C. I am flying with SAS. Now this is the first time in a long time I can remember flying with an airline that I really don't know anything about. So I'm super excited to share this trip from London uh, on through Copenhagen and then back to uh, Washington, D.C. with you. Should be a pretty exciting one. Let's get checked in. As soon as I got to the check-in desk, it seemed like something wasn't quite right. It was just taking too long to check me in. Pretty soon, the ticketing agent sent me to another desk where I learned my fate. And just like that, my excitement about SAS, my curiosity about a new airline is over. Today's trip report is going to be with Virgin Atlantic uh, because that SAS flight from Copenhagen to Washington was canceled. So let's go get checked in at the Virgin desk. Now look, it'd be easy to be upset about a canceled flight, but I mean, you know, what are you going to do? These things happen. Uh, so it's an opportunity to try a different airline, uh, Virgin, and share that with you. Uh, let's, uh, let's get on over there. Now I never learned the cause of the cancellation, but I had plenty of time to think about it because the walk from Terminal 2 over to Terminal 3 was long. Now one of my favorite things about traveling is checking out departure boards and lists of airlines that are flying, and there's no place better than London Heathrow. But for me, it was going to be all about Terminal 3 and Virgin Atlantic. For my trouble, SAS provided me with 12 pounds to spend on, well, whatever I wanted to in terms of food or drinks. Now, I chose instead to head over to the Virgin Atlantic Lounge, and I'm glad I did. There was so much to see and do in this place. Unfortunately, however, this last-minute ticket, along with my strange routing, I think, provided four S's on my boarding pass, which meant extra security screening for me when I got to the gate. There was no reason to worry about that now. Instead, I thought I'd check out the fireplace for a little warmth. Unfortunately, it's just a TV screen. So I headed outside and up to check the, the deck that is available as part of the lounge for a little plane spotting, and there was a lot to see. I only highlight bathrooms in my trip reports when there's something special, like toilet paper that's more than single ply. Way to go, Virgin Atlantic. Passengers are able to get one spa service as part of their time in the lounge. I chose to get a beard trim, and boy was that nice. You can also get haircuts and other services as well. Much better. Once the sun came up, I headed back to the deck for more plane spotting. If you're a nav geek like me, a roof deck like this is pretty killer. Uh, this is a really great lounge. Uh, so what started out as a disappointment, not getting to review SAS, has turned into a, a pretty cool experience checking out this lounge for the first time. My original flight to Copenhagen left London at 6 o'clock in the morning. That meant I was well and truly early for my 11.30 flight to Washington, Dulles with Virgin Atlantic. So that meant I had plenty of time for plane spot. I eventually decided to go down and get to massage, which was very nice. Now, I had to pay for this, but it was definitely worth it. I may look like a crazy person, but I feel like a million bucks. What a fantastic amenity uh, here in this lounge. Uh, you know, the, the spa, what a great feature. I've got plans in January to fly with Virgin Atlantic from Atlanta to London. That flight will be on an A340 like this one. Today's flight, on the other hand, is on an A330. Do you think I should make a trip report about that flight as well, even though it'll be relatively similar to this one, I think? Let me know. Pretty soon, it was time for me to head to my seat, 6A, on the A330 that would take me to Washington Dulles. Now, despite my extra security screening, I was on that plane pretty quickly. It was a fairly smooth experience. Now, Virgin Atlantic, this cabin is, well, I mean, it's just weird. We'll certainly take a look at the seat in more detail as we go through the flight, but it truly was a, a, a strange setup. I'm curious, does anyone know how HSBC seems to advertise on every jet bridge in the world? They're everywhere. I'd love to be their ad buyer. Anyway. Shortly after getting settled into my seat, I was offered a pre-departure beverage of champagne, of course. Today we expect 
expect our flight time to take approximately 8 hours and 27 minutes. And I'll have to remind you that smoking is not allowed on board. You can use small handheld electronic devices at any time. As long as they're not transmitting or receiving data, they are held firmly in one hand or kept in your pocket. First things first about this seat. I couldn't believe how many warnings there were. Warning. 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 After completing my very own safety briefing, I decided to follow one last instruction. We'll take a closer look at that in-flight entertainment in just a few minutes, but I was distracted by the real entertainment out the window. The seat itself is okay. There's plenty in the way of amenities. Let's, let's take a look. There's a light, a drinks table, the in-flight entertainment screen, of course, a handheld remote to control it, a headphone jack, power ports, Noise cancelling headphones, we'll look at those in just a few minutes as well. And an ottoman. Now that's really where the seat gets a little strange because you're pretty well connected to your next door neighbor's feet. Let's hope if you fly Virgin Atlantic, your neighbor, well, has clean feet and shoes. Mine did, thankfully. Just based on the way these look, regular viewers of this channel kind of know what I'm going to think of these noise-canceling headphones. I have high standards for this amenity on a flight, and these were, well, some of the worst. Even when they were turned on, there was almost no noise-canceling benefit to them. I'm glad I brought my own. Internet was available on this flight, and it worked really well. Shortly after takeoff, I was provided with potato chips or crisps and a drink from the bar. After getting a little of my real work done, I decided to check in on Blake Edgington, one of the best YouTubers out there. Now, fortunately, the internet was so strong, I was able to easily watch some of his newer videos. I hope you'll check out his channel if you haven't already. Lunch service began with prawns, which were just fine. I selected the filet as my main course, and I'm sorry to say it was way overdone. Now, Virgin Atlantic did a great job with this tray table. Even though it's small, or maybe because it's small, it's easy to get in and out of the seat, even when you're eating. I think that's very important in a business class seat. Virgin Atlantic has two versions of the A330. The one I'm on includes 185 economy seats laid out in a 242 configuration. There are also 48 premium economy seats laid out in a 232 configuration. Business class passengers have access to a bar that's between them and the premium economy cabin. It was a nice place to gather, and I enjoyed a drink during the flight. This admittedly strange configuration also allows for a seat to be laid flat. Now, the bed was very comfortable, and I enjoyed a few hours of shut-eye during this eight-hour flight. Unfortunately, however, the tray table cannot be used at all if you're in a lie-flat position. So, if you're using it to sleep, that is what you're doing. Also, unfortunately, it can only be folded down by a flight attendant. It's kind of like that Singapore Airlines seat on uh, SQ-21. I really don't like that. I'd like to be able to do this myself. Virgin Atlantic does provide a very nice amenity kit by Herschel. It includes everything you'd expect on a flight like this, including a pen. I always like getting pens from flights. The in-flight entertainment was very nice. The map was great and there were plenty of choices. The screen was really responsive. There's really not much more you can ask for when it comes to in-flight entertainment. Again, this cabin is just a little strange. If you're looking to select a seat, I really recommend the left side of the plane. That's the A side, because you have a little bit more privacy. The other way, you're kind of facing other people. 
A word about this crew. They were fantastic. I was impressed that they recognized each passenger by name throughout the flight. They were efficient and absolutely appropriate for a business class service. Now, Virgin Atlantic from a broader perspective. I think they excel at marketing, which is not a category I normally acknowledge. They're subtle markers that remind passengers of Virgin's unique brand, and I like that. And although I know there are two versions of the A330's cabin, and this is obviously just one, my sense is that there are better ways to cross the Atlantic. But what do you think? Leave me a comment. What's your favorite way to get across the pond? And is there a better way to remind passengers that they're on the U.S. side of the Atlantic than with a hamburger? Now, it was very good and a nice snack uh, just before landing. It was pretty rough going into Washington, so the seatbelt sign was on pretty early. Now, I've been pretty hard on the seat, but here's a nice feature. You can really put your feet up even when you're landing. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. I sure would appreciate it. If you didn't, just double click the thumbs down button and give me feedback about what I could do better. More than anything, I hope you'll leave a comment and let me know what you think and subscribe so you can be among the first people to know when I post a new video here on the channel. But between now and the next time, see you in the sky.